The OSIRIS-REx mission is an exciting mission to study a near-Earth asteroid by the name of Bennu. It launched in September of last year and in that time has traveled around the Earth. And on September 22nd, 2017, it's going to use Earth's gravity as a slingshot to send it launching towards this asteroid. And we're going to be talking with Dr. Christina Ricci about the exciting mission. So OSIRIS-REx is NASA's first asteroid sample return mission. So we'll actually be traveling to a near-Earth asteroid named Bennu, and we're going to be doing a detailed study, a detailed mapping of the entire surface. And we'll be following that up by actually doing a small, safe high-five maneuver and retrieving a sample so that we can better understand the formation of our early solar system and those organic molecules that may have seeded life on Earth. Wonderful. And uh, Earth's gravity is going to act on OSIRIS-REx, correct, like a slingshot, and it's going to send it uh, to the asteroid Bennu. Can you tell us a little bit about how that works? Yeah, so we successfully launched the spacecraft actually September 8th of last year, and we've been in cruise bound since, and we're actually heading towards Earth right now. And a little after, or sorry, a little before 1 p.m. Eastern time today, we'll actually get close enough to Earth to where we'll be able to feel that gravitational pull, and it will slingshot us around the planet. Now, instead of using the slingshot for acceleration, like most spacecrafts do, we'll be actually using it to change our direction so that we're in the same trajectory as Bennu. Great, and can you tell us a little bit about what you would learn uh, from asteroids like Bennu by studying them up close versus far away? Sure, so asteroids are remnants of the early solar system some four and a half billion years ago. And so by studying them, we'll be able to study these really primitive materials. And an asteroid like Bennu is actually carbon rich. It's the right size and shape for us, and it's close enough to Earth to where we can do these highly detailed studies of the entire surface. And then when we bring that sample home, we'll be able to detail that car we'll be able to detail study that carbonaceous material in fine levels and be able to investigate it for generations to come. You know, this is the largest sample return mission since the Apollo era. So these samples are going to be around for a very long period of time. Great. And the mission launched uh, early September of 2016 and I wanted to know now that it is September 2017 does the fact that the Earth's orbit take a full year have anything to do with the fact that the spacecraft launched a year ago and will now a year later be slingshotted towards Bennu? Yeah so so our backup launch date was actually September of this year so we, we managed to succeed in launching last year, and now we just have to use the Earth gravity slingshot maneuver for that course correction, that trajectory correction. It helps us save a little bit of fuel too. Um, but really, uh, our goal was to launch successfully, which we did last year, and this was the backup date. Okay, and has OSIRIS-REx, has this mission built on any previous uh, gravity slingshot maneuvers um, from the past? How is it built upon uh, the history of uh, this maneuver? Yeah, NASA is kind of legendary when it comes to gravity assists. We've been doing them for over 40 years. Think back in the Mariner era. Um, Voyager actually used two different gravity assists at Jupiter and Saturn to be able to slingshot around. It, it did several other bodies too, but the two biggest bodies in the solar system, Jupiter and Saturn, were the ones that got us that speed to be able to finally leave the solar system. And one of the big kind of, you know, touch your heartstrings moments last Friday for Cassini was actually when we used Titan to slingshot us and change our trajectory such that we were coming into Saturn. And so that grand finale of the Cassini mission was in part due to a gravity assist at the moon Titan. OSIRIS-REx is also going to be using a really interesting technique to obtain the sample from the asteroid. It's going to extend this robotic arm to effectively do a high five on the surface of the asteroid. Can you talk a little bit about what that procedure will, will be like? Sure, yeah. So this is, this is not your average Monday night football high five. This is going to be a nice, slow, safe, touchdown where basically the arm will extend down, will puff the nitrogen gas to stir up the regolith and collect that sample. We'll then back away from the asteroid, put it into the sample return capsule, safely stow it, and then travel back to Earth. And in 2023, we'll eject the sample return capsule from the spacecraft, have it come down through, atmos through Earth's atmosphere, and land at the Utah Testing Range Facility, where scientists will be able to get the, the sample and really study that material. And um, on top of the uh, 
studying the sample to learn about the early solar system, is there anything else that scientists are really excited about learning uh, from this asteroid? Yeah, so we're actually able to learn how asteroids move, which is pretty cool and really important in terms of security for our planet. So there's this really cool effect that happens on an asteroid car that you're called the Yarkovsky effect. And it's basically where sunlight comes in on one side and it starts to heat it up and it causes a little bit of spinning of the asteroid. And as a result, that changes the orbit ever so slightly. And so by studying that change, we'll be able to better understand the Yarkovsky effect, not only for Bennu, but for other potentially hazardous asteroids near us. Are there other asteroids that will be studied in future missions? So, so yes, there's, there's going to be other asteroids that we will go to, um, but right now we're really focusing on Bennu and Osiris-Rex. So NASA, of course, is going to go and do many more exciting things. 